Now that we've talked about what a lighting crew does as far as job description and hierarchy, let's look at some of the rules they apply to measure the light intensity and luminance in a scene. One of the first rules that comes into the factor here is foot candle. A foot candle is an old standard measure of illumination that basically says that one lumen per square foot um, diminishes over a distance and here we can see this diagrammed out algebraically and all we're saying is that twice the distance equals one-fourth the light. So if we have a source, a source of energy here, which we're thinking of electromagnetic energy, which are light waves, the farther they go, the more they spread, the less intense the light is. And so if you figure the energy twice as far from the source is spread over four times the area in its natural spread, so it's thus one-fourth the intensity. Um, so another way of looking at it, if we look at the equation later on, is um, half the distance equals four times the light. So here we have the candle, and one foot candle lights the square. But if two feet, we have to divide that, we have, we have that square divided by four, so it's only lighting one fourth the square with that same intensity. And of course, three feet, it's one ninth in intensity, and so on. The equation basically is intensity equals constant light output over distance squared. And we see that here, so that twice the distance equals one-fourth the light, or like I said, half the distance equals four times the light. And that is, intuitively we can see this, and we, and we think of it and when we're lighting, if we're sh doing a shot that's a telephoto shot, say it's a distant shot, and we have to have our lamps behind the camera so it's throwing light at the object, well, we're going to need more light because it's diminishing and spreading over that distance. So if we want to see what we're seeing, we have to increase the power of the light because of our inverse square rule. Likewise, if we move our object closer to us, we don't need as much light. So it's pretty much all intuition. The next rule we want to look at is the, what we call the rule of thirds. Or not the rule of thirds, but three-point lighting. And um, here we have the person that we're lighting with a, it, uh, under three lights. Here we have a key light, fill light, and backlight. So it basically it's a three-point lighting setup. And that means with the backlight, we're separating the object of the person from the background so they don't blend in and and become part of that background. There's a separation, there's some depth. And then we have key light, which highlights what we're looking at. And there's fill light, which lessens the shadows, softens the light that's being thrown on what we're looking at. So key light tends to throw hard shadows. Fill light, because it's softer and more widespread, it will soften those shadows and what you want usually when you're lighting is some kind of setup that gives you contrast to give uh, uh, depth to your face or your object so you play with this here we have a backlight which will be a smaller intensity than the key light and the fill light will be in between here's a nice example basic three point lighting setup uh, talking about the intensity so if we have the key light, which is the brightest light, they're coming from our left, we do it at a 45 degree angle. And what they say when we're setting up a scene is that the easiest way to set up a scene is you get where the camera is and you stand and put your arms up at a 45 degree angle and then you point them at the object at a 45 degree angle so that um, you, when you swing your arms back, that's where you're going to put the lights. So the lights should be right 45 degrees from where you're standing up at a 45 degree angle. And that will mean that you'll probably get a basic setup for your three-point lighting that you can adjust later. So the key light will be the brightest light, and the fill light will be less light with the, as far as intensity goes because to soften the shadows, you need, don't need glaring light. And the backlight is just to give you rim light behind the head or the object to separate it from the background. Here we can see this in this, in this uh, example here. And this example is good because it shows you don't need three lights to get your three-point lighting system because you can have a key light and you can have that light since it's the strongest light bounce off a reflector card or a bounce board and supply the fill light because any light that's being reflected is more diffuse softer and then you still can have the backlight in the background there here's an example of somebody being uh, set up for an interview here we have a high key light the fill lights a little lower it doesn't need to be as high and the backlight usually needs to be the highest because we want that rim light on the head separating it from the background.
So here's an example of the key light, strong to the right of her head, nothing else is lit. Here's the fill light coming from the left, we'll balance out that strong key light. And then here's a backlight that's just going to illumine the back or side of her head to distinguish it from the background. And here's what we have, if you're looking at it all put together here, we have a key light from the left, we have the fill light from the right, and it's it's not taking away all the shadows. It's just it's just what it's doing is is it's it's allowing the key light to take the prominence on one side of the face so that some shadows can give some contour and contrast on the right side. And there's back light separating the the, the head from the background. And here we can look at a key light only. Here comes a fill light to fill in, and the back light. So looking at it again, you have key light to the left, fill light to the right, and then a little back light in the back of the head. You can see that the masters understood this when they were painting all the way back to Leonardo da Vinci here, doing strong key light to separator uh, and very little fill light on the left and backlight nil. But it, what it does is it gives good contrast, makes her look more um, human and not so flat. Here we have Rembrandt understanding this perfectly with the fill on the right, softening the shadows of uh, the light on the right side of the face, so it's just lightly shadowed. And then uh, the key light, hard on the left side, and a little rim light on his cat to separate him from the background. And Vermeer, a master of light himself, the woman with the pearl earring. Here she's got the key light coming from the left so that you can see her eyes really well. And yet it's reflecting off the pearl earring and the fill light that he's painted on the right, just soft on the side of her turban, and the back light separating the turban from the background, understanding all this, giving the contrast a certain softness and depth. In our movies, since we're concerned with horror movies, lighting is, of course, prominent. And here we have Nosferatu, 1919 German horror movie, famous vampire movie, all key light here because what they're concerned with is German expressionism and shadows and so they get the the long fingers and the hunched back making this person look forbidding and if we have Dracula Bela Lugosi here and what we've done here is we've or they've given them strong key light from the right so that the fill light soft on the left give them that very strong contrast between light and dark and then a little light on the top of his head, you can see their little backlight to separate him from the back. If you're doing something like The Mummy, early movie, you don't want any fill light. You want those shadows. So it's all key light. One blast of key light, nothing but shadows. Although there is a little backlight on his head to separate him from his coffin. And we have Exorcist here, where we blast her with key light, little backlight on her head, forget the fill light. We want harsh shadows, hard edges. And if we look at Mike Myers in Halloween, look at the lighting is similar to Bella Lugosi's where we have strong key light on the on the right and no 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 fill light on the left, so it gives them strong harsh contrast, just like the knife, where it glares at the tip and it's shadowy towards the handle. Everything is high contrast, sharp, nothing soft here. And when we talk about Freddy. It's nothing but key light, as you can see. It's just one strong light, no fill at all. And I chose Maniac as an example of another horror movie where the the, the rule is is where the contrasting light, totally three point lighting, but very very strong contrast. They're doing the left side of his face, and then the fill is very soft on the right side. Little uh, backlight on his head. Every scene, he's going to be illumined only with strong key light, almost no fill, to give you that menacing dark shadow, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde look. You can see the back, back of his head slightly uh, lit with backlight. And also, from the same movie, this is just a fine example of three-point lighting in a very grotesque scene, but we see that the key light comes from the left so that her hair is burnished copper gold and highlights the, the blood but the darkness on the, on the right side with the soft fill just picks up points of light so that the blood is darker and, and goopier and, and, and more 
uh, I'd say poisonous looking. And then in the background, we have a little bit of the backlight to separate herself from the wall in the background. So they, they have used their three point lighting here so that the key is prominent, the fill is less, the backlight's still there, but done right, it still makes that horror movie pop.